Hydrogen, Hydrogen has, has one proton, proton and, and one electron. electron. Helium, Helium has, has two, protons two protons and, and two, electrons. two electrons. But all you need to memorize for the ABC technique of chemistry is that hydrogen has one proton and one electron. And the other is that helium has two electrons. We don't even need to consider the protons of helium because it's the electrons that interact that make chemistry what it is. And the second portion of learning the ABC technique is that we'll only have to count to eight. And most of the time we get to count by twos. There are two general types of bonding in chemistry, and the first is ionic bonding. This occurs when elements on the right-hand side of the table bond with elements in the left-hand side of the table. Now, the elements on the right-hand side of the table, since they're closer to their, having their octet shell filled, have a more higher affinity to pull electrons away to fill those shells. What's stable in the world are electron pairs. Helium, element number two, has a pair of electrons. If we hold a match to a helium balloon, it would pop. It wouldn't explode. But hydrogen, on the other hand, only has one electron. So what we see is hydrogen has to get together with another hydrogen in order to form an electron pair. This was what was in the Hindenburg blimp. And uh, this makes it explosive since the two hydrogens need to share the electron pair. What we see is after one pair of electrons, it takes four more pairs to get to the next noble gas, neon. Four pairs is eight. So if we see that we count to eight electrons, that's a stable stopping point. Now the table of the elements shows this, but we need to fold it. And when we fold it such that element number four lines up next to element five, we can now count across a new orbital shell, starting with lithium. If we count across, we'll get to eight at neon. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we would start a new shell with sodium and we count across eight again. So what this means now is after one pair of electrons with four pairs being stable next, this is known as an octet. So what I say is when we count to eight, we stop. So with noble gases being eight, if we came over one more, starting with fluorine, all the elements below fluorine have seven electrons in their valence outermost shells. So what this means is one more electron will give those elements eight, and then they'll be stable. So there's an empty little red asterisk in there showing like a puzzle piece that one more electron will give that eight. So now the beauty of the table of the elements is it lines up elements that react similarly. So if we folded group 7b next to group 1a, we see that all these elements in group 1a, they have one electron available to donate to the elements in group 7. So now anybody in group 1 can bond with anybody in group 7b. So take, for instance, hydrogen and fluorine. This would make hydrogen fluoride gas. We could take, say, cesium and fluorine, cesium fluoride. And the most popular one that I'm sure everyone has heard of is if we combine sodium with chlorine, the one electron from sodium can get donated to chlorine, making sodium chloride. This is table salt. Magnesium needs two chlorine atoms for its two valence electrons. So next, if we count across backwards from neon, 8, 7, 6, we see oxygen has two empty little valence. With the two little flowers, if we line oxygen next to lithium, we'd see that we would need one lithium for one of those empty ones and another lithium for the next empty one. So that's two lithiums, Li2O.
Beryllium supplies two electrons for one oxygen atom. Ionizable electrons are transferable. So this is how we picture ionic bonding occurring. The element on the left-hand side of the table that's got an electron available to donate will actually come over and fill the space, forming the electron pair of the more electronegative atom on the right-hand side of the table. So what results is an empty electron space, leaving a positive charge because a negative charge left. And what results on the more electronegative atom filling its octet is the electron fills that space, completing an electron pair to complete the octet. That's ionic bonding. So some examples of ionic bonding here will be sodium and chlorine. So as I said, sodium here will actually give up its electron to chlorine. And see, by chlorine getting its eighth electron now, it gets a negative charge overall. Sodium, on the other hand, lost its electron, so now what's left behind is a positive charge. This makes sodium chloride. This is known as table salt. Those first two examples were a one-to-one -one atomic ratio, but now notice, even though it's a one calcium and one oxygen, there's actually two electrons that are being transferred. So one electron, Two electrons leaves behind a two plus charge on calcium, and the oxygen with its two vacancies for the octet gets a one electron, two electron, a negative two charge for oxygen. So calcium oxide is an ionic bond that has a calcium with a two plus charge and an oxygen with a two minus charge. Again, see the octet is being filled by two electrons. Now see how the folding combined before. When magnesium was folded next to fluorine, we saw magnesium had two electrons in its outermost valence shell. So two electrons available, but fluorine only needed one more for its octet. So what we'll see now is that fluorine takes one electron, becomes fluoride anion. Magnesium gives up another electron to another fluorine, showing that we need two fluorines to balance the magnesium and what we'll see is magnesium now will have a two plus charge. Fluorine, becoming fluoride anion, will have a minus one charge, but we'll have two of them. So this atomic ratio has a one magnesium and two fluorines. Magnesium, fluoride. And hydrogen, with its one proton and one electron, well, when that one electron goes to chlorine, which now fills chlorine's octet, this makes chlorine stable, but again, chlorine with the negative charge becomes chloride anion, while the H, what's left, one proton, one electron, take one electron away, you're left with just a proton. So this is an easy way to remember there's a positive charge on the proton. This is what hydrochloric acid is. In water, you have a proton, it's written H plus, and Cl minus, AQ meaning water. Now hydrochloric acid is a strong acid because this proton is given up very easily in water. And when this happens, this is called hydronium, written H3O plus, cation. Hydronium cation, positive charge. The chloride negative, chloride anion. For the second type of bonding, covalent bonding, what we'll see is that an electron is available to pair up and the other element's electron is available to pair up. So they'll actually combine by getting closer and closer and they'll get closer together until we, what we'll see is that the vacancy will actually be filled by each other's electrons. So what this results in is a sharing of the electron pair between the two bonding elements. And this covalent bonding 
is where two electrons are now shared in an electron pair.